Hello again everyone, this is Joe Hinches with Beyond the Chart and in this stock market education video I'm going to talk all about the put to call ratio, how I calculate it and how I use it to tell when the stock market is at extreme levels, so stay tuned. So let me, uh, let me pull over and say here's where the information come from. The put to call information comes from the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, the CBOE. Okay, This comes out, they publish this every day. I get this data and I put it into a spreadsheet. Now you've seen the spreadsheet and I'm going to show, you, show it to you again in a minute. They showed various ratios here. Total put to call, index put to call, exchange traded products, which is all of theirs, I, I believe. Equity put to call, this is the number I focus on. And then there's put to call on the VIX also. I focus on this one because I, it's the sentiment I'm after. It focuses purely on the stocks. I don't want the indice put to call to affect my ratio in here because um, I, I think that that can have a lot of uh, arbitrage and uh, hedging going on by people with the indices, that type of thing in the big funds. So I really want the focus to be purely on the stocks in here. So... What this means is, right, 0.68 means there's like, say, 68 puts for every 100 calls that were traded. That creates a 0.68 ratio for the day, okay? 68 puts for every 100 calls. Now, the market has a tendency to have a bullish bias, okay? So because of that, uh, you know, the uh, when you get down, the readings that I'll be talking about where I consider extreme bullishness still show that uh, the put to call ratio is like down in the 50s and 40s kind of thing and uh, and then when it gets bearish it's up into the 80s 90s and above and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second let me pull this back over and let me pull my spreadsheet in and then we'll look actually talk and show some instances alright so this is June 2014 this is the last time I got what I called bullish extreme sentiment. All right. So what I'm what I flag as red is when my rate the ratio that I get off the CBOE gets below 0.55 in here. And if it then gets this is the 10 day. Here's the actual readings. This is the 10 day moving average of those readings. And I believe it, I just use a simple moving average of it, 10 day simple moving average of these readings. And that's to kind of weed out some of the noise and make sure you've gotten a, a you know, extreme, you know, a, a decent reading in here. So when it gets down to below 0.50, I take it to a different color because it's a little more intense. OK, and in individual readings down here, like 0.38, that's an extreme. OK, so I color it purple, dark purple, dark red and red. All right. So that's what I'm looking at. So we're looking in here like 49 puts for every 100 calls. This tells me that there's a level of bullishness uh, is uh, is getting pretty high. And that's, you know, to me, a contrarian signal that some that we may be close to a top or a top may be coming. OK. So when I, so that's how I look at that, and I'll scan back through, and I've showed this before. So here's one where we never, it got into the red, but it never got extreme red, but it still was, it was January 2014. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, let me go, uh, I'm going to take you all the way back into, um, and I'll visit this on the chart. When it gets up into the 80s, okay, and, uh, and into the 90s, that's when there's a, a lot more puts, okay? It's almost equal. You know, like here, here's 116 puts for every 100 calls, 134 puts for every 100 calls, okay? So the bearishness is starting to get extreme, and you're getting a 10-day reading of the bearishness in here. And so uh, that's starting to say, okay, we're getting a little carried away on the bearishness side. We may be close to a bottom. All right, so that's what we look for in here. So let's see, and and so sometimes you know you can see where it starts to get there, but it doesn't get extreme when the 10-day gets above 90. That's this is where I really see a lot more of the bottoms, and I'll I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's go to the chart of the Dow Industrials and talk about and look to see when did we get this type of action. So here we are at the top. Let me phase back out. 
here we are at the top and here we are coming down and when's the last time we had that that extreme bullish reading uh bullishness which uh, was kind of contrary back here in june that's what i was just showing you the initial red that i was showing you back here in june and then what ended up happening we had the the first whack here in uh, july and early august and then a second one here we haven't had another reading since that time. We had one here in January 2014 before the big sell-off into January into the, down to the uh, early February. Now, let's look back and we scan back through this whole bullish move since March of 2000. Now, here is interesting. The, the, the reason I've got a kind of light green here at the bottom in June of uh, 2011 and then August 2011 is because it got the 10 day got into the 80s, but it never got into the 90s. And I think what's happening is it was showing a like a short term bottom. But because we were in a bull move, it didn't get to an extreme. And those are the only two readings where we got uh, more than, say, one or two days of 10 day averages in the 80s. Those are the only two since March of 2009. Now, and I talked about the other day how I got one reading. I got it 0.8, but then it dropped off. So I only got one day here a couple of days ago. And uh, so then here's some of the red tops. And notice how we got some extreme bullishness in here, right in the middle of this move, uh, in the middle of this move, before we started to top out. And I think what was happening right in here, here's February 2011. And then we got this choppy top. It became like a head and shoulders top, but it really was like an A, B, and a C move down for this corrective way. So literally, the corrective action started after this peak in here, February 2011, and it was starting to correct and then wallop down. And this was a big indicator that it was coming. Now, it didn't come right away, but it was kind of telling you we were getting bullish extreme in here. It happened back over here in April 2011. And I think that's really, really interesting because look, right in here, this was the flash crash. This was the flash crash of May 6, two, uh, uh, May 6, 2010. We were getting extreme bullish readings throughout the entire month of April, okay, before that happened. Literally setting us up, even though, you know, we all, we know that, you know, it got, got triggered by someone and and you know started all the computers selling uh, and so right in here was another one where we got extreme so let me back out a little bit and you can see okay so now we got the uh, here's the whole bull move and I think what's happening when I look at more of the move in here what I think is happening is that we had a lot of bullishness early on in the bull move and then we got some more up here in this wave three towards the end of wave three. But that's it. It's almost like the bullishness, the bulls got tired and that the bulls were tiring out and we didn't get any more extreme readings in this last fifth wave up here. And now we're rolling over. So uh, I'm watching it now. When we look back here at the um, at the action in the last bear move down, we look at here, let me zoom in, and I'll tell you what, what we're looking at in here. This, what I did was I highlighted the ones that got to 0.8, 10 days on the 0.8, but also got into where the 10 days of 0.9 or above, okay? Uh, and so right here at the bottom of this first wave down, and this was like five waves, this is the fifth wave, almost like truncated a little bit in here. Then we got the counter trend wave two or uh, like a B move rally. I'm thinking this is like A, B, and then a large C wave that had five waves to it. Okay. The bottom of the first A wave here, which had five waves, is where we got the extreme readings. Then as we got into wave three with intense selling, we also got some extreme readings in here. So I think what it's telling you is that when you get some of these extreme readings, We'll have to look to see, but once you get in a bear market, you got to be a little bit careful. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're at a bottom. And, uh, it, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of a heads up, but it also doesn't mean you're bottom. Because look at the kind of selling. It might mean that the selling is, is pausing or stopping, although this would have been a fake out right in here. Uh, these are telling you here would have been a little bit of a fake out, and then that's it. 
that's it. We didn't get it down into here, which I thought was kind of interesting. So anyway, that's the sentiment. And when you look back and I go back up in here to 2007, I wasn't seeing any extreme uh, the bullishness and near the top up here, which I thought was kind of interesting. Now, I don't have data all the way back into 2006 on my current data. So again, it's possible that in this fifth final move up here, we didn't get any of the extreme, just like in this fifth final move towards the end here, we didn't get any extreme reading. Okay, so as you can tell, this uh, video was primarily created on September 3rd. So it's about three months old, but there really hasn't been any changes. I mean, here's the put to call ratio uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet that I've got and I use. Uh, this column again is the 10 day uh, re readings and these are the actual readings. Uh, so if we scroll back and here's December 7th. So if we scroll back in this uh, up in here back into September, you'll see that on a 10 day basis, nothing has happened on an extreme. They had this one day 10 day extreme on September 1st. But since September 3rd, when I made that uh, the, the original video, the main body of the video, nothing has really changed in here. Now, the one thing I'll note is that every once in a while, when you get these extreme readings on a one day basis, one day readings, sometimes you get the bounce and sometimes you'll get a bounce for a few days. And you can see like here uh, at the end of September, we got one to uh, sub one day extreme readings for two days in a row. And of course, at the end of September is when we then got the little rally coming off of, we start to, to rally up off of the uh, decline. And then we had a bullish reading on the 28th of October uh, and uh, one more here. But again, the one day ones you, you kind of pay attention to only from the standpoint of like, like you know, like here last Thursday on the 3rd, we got a very uh, uh, bearish reading, which implies bullish. I mean, so 90, 90 puts for every 100 calls uh, being traded in here. And uh, and so you, you get that reading and you're like, OK, that's a kind of a one day extreme. And, you know, what did it do the next day on Friday? It bounced really, really big. Dow was up almost 400 points. But that's only to me, that's just one little piece of information to kind of put into the daily basis. But from the standpoint of strong uh, turns in the marketplace, uh, tops, bottoms, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, you really, I rely much more heavily on the 10 day uh, readings that we get. And as you can see, we don't have any extremes. And as I talked about earlier in the video, uh, we haven't had an extreme top type reading since what we got in June 2014, which was really kind of a precursor to the tops. Uh, you know, and so far the market topped out in May of 2015, and that hasn't been exceeded at this point and uh, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, anticipating that it's going to you know, it's going to be I mean I, right now the way I view the market action and the wave structure and all of that uh, I think there's a high probability that that top is in and that it may be the top for quite a while all right that's it for today if you thought the if you liked this video if you felt it was very helpful please uh, like the video hit the like button down below and uh, and share the video. Uh, you know, tell other people about it, share the video with other people. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can copy the link and, and share it with other folks. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit the little subscribe button down here in the lower right hand corner. And also check out the website. Come on over and, uh, and check out the, the, the website and see what I've got for you over there. All right, this has been Joe for Beyond the Chart. Uh, thanks for stopping in. We'll talk to you on the next video.